Rise among us, let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Say, let the glory, let the glory of the Lord, let it rise, rise among us, let the glory of the Lord, let it rise, rise among us, let the praises of the King. Rise among us, let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Say, let the songs, let the songs of the Lord rise among us, let the songs of the Lord rise among us, let the joy of the King. Rise among us, let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Say, let the spirit, let the spirit of the Lord, let it rise, rise among us, let the spirit of the Lord rise among us, let the freedom of the King. Rise among us, let it rise. Oh, stand up, sir. Oh, 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 now come on, let it rise. Say, let the spirit, let the spirit of the Lord, let it rise, rise among us, let the spirit of the Lord rise among us, let the freedom of the King. Rise among us, let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Say, let the glory, let the glory of the Lord, let it rise, rise among us, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the joy of the King. Rise among us, let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Say, let the glory, let the glory of the Lord, let it rise, rise among us, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the joy of the Rise among us, let it rise. Oh, 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 Amen. So nice to see everyone this morning. I'm trying to get myself situated here. Church, this morning what I would like for us to do <clears throat> is follow up a little bit from the two messages we've had in the previous weeks. Uh, Todd blessed us with a message concerning family matters, and I had a message uh, for you on behalf of uh, all the shepherds, uh, just sharing with you a uh, shepherd's message. And today, uh, this message is going to be all about our family. And my goal today is to help us to understand that there is an enemy. We've identified the enemy, the enemy is the devil. And we didn't understand that the devil has targeted your family. We need to understand that he has nothing good for your family. And that uh, in this day, our, our desire is that we will all better prepare ourselves to handle Satan. You see, it's not if he's going to attack. It's when. And 
if you think he has not already attacked your family, you need to pull your head out of the sand because your family has been attacked and it's been going on for a while. So the goal today is to help you and help me to face the attacks of Satan. And what I want to do here is to make this quick point, and I have three for you today, that we need to know that Satan is real, and he is not your friend, but your enemy. And we don't like to deal with that sometimes, but, but, but Satan is your enemy, and he's out to do damage to you. And, and, and we need to understand a few things. Listen, the Apostle Paul says this to help us to understand that we are aware of Satan, but yet he still plays such an impactful part in our life. He wreaks havoc. Listen when he says, I did this so that Satan would not win anything from us. And he says this, we know very well what his plans are. Now, what's interesting about Satan is that you can know his plans and he still can be successful in attacking your family. You can know his plans and he still can damage your future. You can know his plans and he still can take captive your family, your children, even you. And so we need not to sit in this church today saying that, you know, I never knew anything about Satan. Because he is, he is active. Look at this verse. Because what I want to do is help you to appreciate that we're going to go all the way back to the garden to really appreciate that this battle or this war started way before God put your family together. Because this battle began with the first family and it's carried all the way through. Listen, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 says, I will make you and the woman enemies to each other. Now this is when God is giving curses. He has, he's going to curse Satan, he's going to curse man, he's going to curse woman for everybody's role in the Garden of Eden. And so he gets to Satan and he lets him know that you're going to be an enemy of this woman. Okay? Now listen what he says. Your children and her children will be what, family? Enemies. Enemies. That's talking about you. Everybody in here had a mother, amen? Now, I thank God nobody said anything other than amen. But we're going to have some problems up in here. We all have a mama, and all the mamas are connected to Eve. Your children and her children will be enemies. And watch this. You will bite her child's foot. In other words, Satan, this is a, prophetic message in the book of Genesis that Satan will reach all the way forward and attack Jesus Christ himself. That Satan will have a role in even putting Jesus on the cross thinking that, that, that this would be the, the, the end. But, but it's not the end. And it says, but he, referring to the Son of Man, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah, but He will crush your head. In other words, when Jesus got up out of the grave, He crushed the head of Satan. And this is prophetic. And so we need, we need to understand that this enemy of ours did not begin in the 21st century, but began at the beginning of time. Now, I want to move on to the next point, but let me say this. Satan is at war with God. He cannot attack God, so he's going to attack you and me. He's not more powerful than God, so he will attack the ones that God created. So you're not, <laughs> I love saying this, you're not just on the battleground, 
You are the battleground. And Satan has nothing good for you. Point number two is this, family. It's really a form of a question I'm giving you an answer. What is Satan's greatest weapon? What is Satan's greatest weapon? Lies, lies, and more lies. That, that is his greatest weapon. And, and, and then from there, it goes to fears, fears, and more fears. Look at this scripture, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. He says, but I am afraid that your minds will be led away from your true and pure following of Christ. Here, the Apostle Paul is trying to remind the church in Corinth that, that he's concerned about their fellowship and commitment to Jesus. And listen to what he says. This could happen just as Eve was what? Tricked by that snake with his clever what? Lies. Lies. You must understand something. If the enemy could persuade Eve, he can persuade you. If the enemy could trick Eve, he can trick you. Now, you can also be in Christ, and he still could be tricking you out. Therefore, we all must learn to hold our deepest of allegiance to Jesus Christ, that we must protect our minds in Christ Jesus. I want to go to something that is going to have you to think a little bit, okay? I want to talk about lies that Satan gives us that make our family or families more dysfunctional. Now, this, I'm going to go ahead and let you know, this is going to hit you, some of you are going to get hit the wrong way. And so I'm just going to say be blessed, chew on that, if you need to get with me or one of the shepherds or the staff members, you go ahead and make a point to do that. But let me tell you some of the lies, some of the lies. Lies to women. This is one of the major lies. Your children really don't need their daddy to be your husband. What do I mean by that? That's a lie from Satan himself. When we look around and I hear all about these baby daddies, somehow we have become convinced that baby daddies shouldn't be husbands. Somehow we have become convinced somewhere along the line that we have believed the lie that children don't need mamas to have a husband. Somewhere down the line, we have believed a lie from Satan. And we have believed this lie, and that is the very thing that is attacking our family. When you break up mama and daddy, you have gone right into the cupboard of Satan lies. And I don't care, you can read all of Oprah's book, I don't care what book you read, you may not be reading the right book, which is called the B-I-B-L-E. Because that book will give you life. Now, I'm not trying to beat anybody up because I'm trying to say this. Although I do not want anyone to believe the lie, I can understand why you believe the lie. I can understand why. Lies to men. It is acceptable to walk away from your seed. Brothers, you have believed a lie. I don't know what the government has told you that they'll go ahead and take care of mama and your child. You may be spending all your time running away from the government, trying to dodge the government, but you can't dodge God. And you may think, well, I'm just going to deal with God on my own terms. No, no, you're going to deal with God on his terms. You can't be dealing with God on your own terms because the last time I checked, you didn't make night and day. Only God made night and day. You're going to be in his court. He's not going to be in your court. And so I don't know where we have come to the point where we just say, you know what, it is okay. 
for me to just walk away from my seat, to walk away from my children, that is a lie. Brothers, I can understand why we, why we might get that way, but it's inexcusable. And I want to call you back to your children. I don't care if you have 15, 20 of them. My goodness, you're going to be sure enough broke. But you need to come back to your, child, your children. Stop living the lie. Here's another lie. Lies to parents. Ready for this? You, don't have, you do not have the right to teach or demand spiritual righteousness from your children. Somehow we believe that lie. I can't tell you how many times I have talked to parents and they tell me, well, you know what? You know, you know, my child can go to, you know, this place or that place because, you know, I don't want to hinder the, uh, my child's uh, relationship with God. And I said, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not going to tell my child what they uh, can read in the Bible and what they cannot read in the Bible. And I said, well, won't you wake up? You are the spiritual leader of your child. And when Satan has convinced you that you are not, when you're just going to leave the spiritual influence up to your child to make a decision about what? Life and death? You are the spiritual leader. If you have a household, whether you are single, married, you are that spiritual leader. And parents, demanding spiritual righteousness it's really not an option for the Christian. And so what that means, family, is that you're going to have to get into your child's face and present Jesus to them. You cannot tell them, you, you, you cannot say, I told you to do this. You've got to show them how to live a Christ-like life. Now, I made mention of this. Parents, you need, to, you, you need to look at your child's Facebook. You need to look at it. And you know what you need to do? If you see some unrighteousness going on, shut it down. You don't need President Obama's permission. You don't need the mayor's permission. You have God's authority to shut it down. If your child I, I'm going to get in some trouble. If your child locks his or her door, knock it down. That child doesn't pay the bill, Lytle. Bam. Knock it down. If that doesn't work, get an ax. Chop it down. You, you pay for the door. It's your room. Bam. I'm going to hurt myself. I keep doing that. I'm going to hurt myself. I'm going to get happy up here. Help me, Jesus. Good thing my wife ain't up in here. So I can't believe I did that. <laughs> Let me get myself together. Okay, I don't get out of, okay, all right, okay. Oh, last of children. Now, here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Let's keep going. Last of children. I am not highly valued by both of my parents. And you know what? That's a lie, but you know what? Sometimes that's the truth. And when that's the truth, it can lead to this next lie because we see it all over our land. When both parents do not highly value their children, then what becomes acceptable in the land is that any type of family is ordained by God. Any type of family. Now, now, now look, 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 look. I can understand how it has gotten to be that way. But I'm just going to tell y'all the truth from Scripture. It still takes a man and a woman to raise a child in the way God has said. Because it took a man and a woman, help me Jesus, to make a child. Therefore, it takes a man, not a man and a man, not a woman and a woman, I'm saying they may raise a child, but it's not ordained by God. 
but I can understand how we got there. I'm just saying a man and a woman has been ordained by God to raise children. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. I understand why we have a man and a man and a woman and a woman raising children. I'm just saying. Because when I look at my life, I understand the balance. Sometimes I have to tell my children when they act crazy, because children, help them, Jesus, can act crazy. And so, 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 sometimes I'll tell my boys, do you know what my job is? You know, they, 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 they know, they say, yeah, 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 daddy. Love, uh, prepare, and protect. I said, that's right. Let, let a brother do his job. Let me do my job. I said, do you know what mama's role is? They, they, they don't know that. I said, your mama's role is to protect you from me when I'm ready to kill you. That's your mama's role. That's your mama's role. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Look at them smiling on the front row. They're all right. They all right. Don't be writing me up for uh, your child abuse and carrying on. Don't, don't, don't you do that. Don't you do that. Don't you do that. Don't you do it. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Lies. You know, there's been, you know, Satan tell, will tell a lie to the church. Here's one of the top lies. Be afraid of the sins of others and the mess that sin leaves behind. And so the church at times will believe, you know what, I don't want to mess with that stuff. I don't want to mess with that stuff. You know what, let me, let, let me break it down in this way. Sometimes we get mixed up and crossed up when we start saying, you know what, whoo, I don't like everybody in the church. Let, 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 let me say this to you. That's okay. Because I don't like some of you. <laughs> I'm lying, I'm lying. No, I'm not. I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. Okay. Look, 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 look. What I'm trying to say is this. I don't have to like you saying I may not want to go to Buffalo Wild Wings with you because I can't stand the way you talk. But, let me, but let's get this straight. I may not like you like my best friend, but I'm commanded to love you. I'm commanded to love you. And so what that means is that I, I can't ignore you because what? I'm committed to you, brother. I'm committed to you, sister. But I may not like you at times. But I'm committed to love you. That means that I'm not going to turn my back on you. Even though you might get on my last nerve. I got to just roll on over and say I'm committed to love you. And guess what? <laughs> you committed to love me. That's right. Because I know I'm crazy sometimes. Need somebody to love me. All right. Here we go. We're going to come down the stretch here. Point number three is this, family. You got to learn and I have to learn to fight our enemies or to fight our enemy with Jesus. Now, let me try to work through two passages, okay? I'm going to try to work through this. Okay, listen. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 says this. We live in this world. But we don't fight our battles in the same way the world does. Stop right there. We don't fight. Listen, you can't get through this world without fighting. You're going to have to learn to fight the right person for the right reason. The weapons we use are not human ones. Our weapons have power from God and can destroy, here we go, and can destroy, here we go, and can destroy the enemy's strong places. In other words, the truth of God can destroy the lies of Satan. The truth of God. We destroy people's arguments. Anybody who's going to stand up against God, what Paul is saying, the Apostle Paul is saying, that we destroy those arguments. Why? Oh, oh, oh how? By the truth of God. Listen, and we tear down every proud idea that raises itself up against the knowledge of God. Any idea that, that will approach the idea and divinity of God, we tear it down by the word. Listen, we also capture every thought and make it give up and what? Obey Christ. Listen, family, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when you're fighting the enemy, at the end of the day, if the word of God is not helping you to obey Christ, then you've been told a lie. If you're not at the end of the day saying, I surrender 
all to Jesus, then you are believing a lie. Because when it's all said and done, there's only one response in view of Jesus Christ. And that is, I will obey you, Jesus. Because I have no other one to go to. I have no other one. Listen, we're going to end up with this one. When it comes to fighting your enemy with Jesus, I want you to appreciate this verse. Eli uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 11 through 14 says this. Jesus, the one who makes people holy. Thank you, Jesus. And those who are made holy. I like that. So what does Jesus do? He makes people holy, and those who have been made holy are to remain holy if they stick with Jesus. Who are made holy are from, I like this, the same family. Now what does that mean? That should mean everything because Jesus knew we couldn't stand up against Satan by ourselves. So Jesus became a part of our family. That's significant. That is significant. And he goes on to say, so he is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters because he became family, family. He says, God, I will tell my brothers and sisters about you. Before all your people, I will sing your praises. In the midst of my brothers and sisters, I will tell them how great you are, how that you're holy, how that you're patient, how that you're loving. And in the midst of me praising you, I will sing your glory. That's Jesus. He also says, I will trust in God. And he says, I am here. And with me are the children God has given me. What that means is that Jesus stands in front of the line to take on Satan. He stands in front of the line and says, these are my, th this is my family. These are the children of God. They are a child like I'm a child. And we all have inherited the blessings of my God. And he says this, these children are people with physical bodies. So Jesus him, himself became like them and had the same experiences they have. In other words, Jesus took on flesh and blood. God became man and he dwelled among us. And he understands what you're going through. He understands what you've been through. He understands when you cry. He understands when you struggle. Jesus is on your side. Goes on to say that Jesus did this so that by dying on that cross, so that by dying he could destroy, remember that verse in Genesis? Crush the head so that he could destroy the one who has power of death. That is the devil. So what I want to tell you this morning is don't give up. I want to tell you that although you've been told a lie and just like you, I believe many, many, many lies. Don't give up. Don't stop doing what God has called you to do. If you're